shoot. The best way I can explain this is welcome to the biggest test run of my life. Hello all, I'm Mr. Flamingo Reviews, and today I'm not reviewing. Today I am unfortunately recording post commentary. Why? Because I learned the hard way that for a good minute there, everything I was saying did not pick up at all. So hello, and welcome to Pokemon Platinum. You missed the whole opening because I couldn't figure out how to record. You missed everything. I'm just kidding. Basically, you have the whole opening, welcome to the world of Pokemon, named myself, did everything. The usual. Um, so I have yet to figure out how to record sound when I record a gameplay. So what you get instead, what you get instead, is all of my loop music. Hold the applause. Nobody's applauding. So I guess, in post-commentary fashion, Mr. Flamingo talks the Scream franchise. Starting off with Scream 1 in 1996. Scream, directed by Wes Craven, focuses on Sidney Prescott, played by Neve Campbell. And one year, almost, after the murder of her mother, she's the target something very sketchy. Neve Campbell, Leif Schreiber makes a cameo appearance, Courtney Cox, who's just getting big on Friends, David Arquette, Matthew Lillard, I mean, the list goes on and on of pretty solid names. I think, for all intents and purposes, that this is a very stellar cast, a killer cast, no pun intended. The story's simple enough. Vendetta, her boyfriend Billy, spoilers, and her boyfriend, best friend Stu, they're the killers. Mostly because Billy has a vendetta because Sydney's mother was sleeping with Billy's dad, ruined his life, etc, etc. Easy enough motive. Fun kills. I don't normally like slashers and gore movies, but this is one that I make exception for. It's very meta, very entertaining. I have a lot of fun with it. I think uh, some moments could be fleshed out more, but I do think the shock factor of killing someone like Drew Barrymore off in the first 10 minutes is genius, you know? You don't get any better than that. Other than that, you know, it, you know, it's just fun in a gory kind of way. Very interesting. I think that this is still the best Scream movie, but I also think it's like, it's a good stage setter. If there was going to have to be a trilogy, and then of course, frequent other movies, this is a good way to set the stage. Good motive, good leads. Oh, there was even a, uh, can't remember the actor's name right now, but uh, I do think Randy and the actor that played Randy did a fantastic job as well. Moving on, you look at Scream 2. Sydney's moved on to college, trying to put the murders behind her. Still, great cast, including now the likes of Jerry O'Connell, who was a wonderful actor for the time. It was really entertaining. Of course, not as good as the first, but there's commentaries on that, how sequels aren't always as good as the original, and sequel tropes for horror movies or slasher films. What the Scream franchise does really well is, is play meta and, and commentate on the world around them and the film franchises of the time. And I think it was just a lot of fun. The motives are okay for the killers. This is all spoilers. Um, the killer being Billy Loomis's mother was pretty smart and was the same like idea that like in the original uh, like Jason movies, like it was actually Mrs. Voorhees 
for the first movie that was the killer, but in the sequel for this, it's Miss Bloomis. Smart, no? Exact. Like that? Post commentary is not, it should be my foray, but I was hoping to, uh, was hoping to talk as I play, but what? now you just get to listen to me talk about Scream. Overall, the kills are more creative, the action's pretty good, but, you know, it's just missing the originality of the first one. Now, Scream 3. Scream 3 is very interesting, because by this point, they've killed off fan favorite Randy, and they've changed the stage from, like, either small town or small college to sunny Los Angeles. The focus is now on uh, David Arquette's Dewey and Courtney Cox's uh, Gail, who to this point, great characters. In the first movie, Gail is the deputy, I mean, no, Dewey's the deputy of sheriff. Gail is this like nosy jerk reporter, but they had enough chemistry and they kept Dewey alive, which was a very fun choice by Wes Craven and co, who decided that Dewey deserved to live at the end of that movie. And they evolved. Scream 2, I mean, Scream 2 furthers the relationship between Gail and Dewey, and uh, Sydney, who doesn't really like Gail, but go watch those movies. I recommend watching those, at least the first three. And by Scream 3, Sydney, because of Neve Campbell's schedule, has to take the back seat. And in turn, we get more Dewey and Gail, which is actually pretty fun. For Scream 3, they also weirdly lean into the comedy a bit more, which uh, the first two had comedic like undertones. You know, slasher villains. This one, this one was weirdly funny. Uh, the villain, they try to make like... When you do a trilogy, some of these trilogies of movies, they end with the idea that it's all tied back together. It's the big third movie villain who set everything in motion, and they did that for this one. And I mean, take it or leave it. The character of Roman Bridger was not that fleshed out in my opinion. They tried to lean into the past for him. <sighs> it's okay. I mean, I didn't really like Roman that much, but uh, as I've seen that movie more and more, it grows on me in terms of like motive and who he is and the fact that he was like, you know, it was me that told Billy the truth and set this whole stage up and tried to ruin your life, blah, blah, blah. It was, it was, it was okay. If it was going to end there, and it did end there for a while, Scream 3 ended on a fine enough note. It was, it was, it, it ticked off all the boxes, you know. Did what it had to do. The thing is, uh, didn't end there. Then there's Scream 4. Scream 4 is the most early 2010s movie I think I've seen in a long while. Like, just the way that it's filmed, the way that it comes across. I mean, the Scream franchise has never been the most visually interesting outside of the slashing points. But this one is like, you think of like, you know, late late 2000s, early 2010s Transformer shots. Just the way that like everything looks shiny and it, it, it looked cool. Uh, this was a lot more situational on some a random 15th anniversary of the murders. Sydney Prescott rolls back into town, who by this point has finally moved on. Dewey and Gail are married. For this attempt to bring Scream back to the center stage, I mean, I don't know. I think it was okay. Uh, they tried to, uh, they tried to, to do a lot of commentary on reboots and all of that, and this one leaned heavy-handed into the commentary, and that was kind of its saving grace, because a lot of the other things that they did weren't the most creative, but it was very interesting. I mean, if you like the Scream movies, Scream 4 is a welcomed addition, and it's only gotten better with age, I know for a fact, when it came out in the 2010s, I think it was 2011 specifically that nobody really liked it that much, you know? But I mean, it's aged better. Uh, Scream 5, just titled Scream once again, and Scream 6, uh, 
are actually the idea of a requel, which is like a sequel but a reboot, trying to juice up the world and offer some new characters and spins, but also bring back old characters. Like Scream 2022 brought back Dewey, Gale, and Sydney, and I thought, you know, I'm really, I, I'm really not sure if we need another Scream movie. But then when I saw this one, I thought it was actually really good. The first and second act of the movie are fantastically shot. Uh, I was really, I was really gutted when they gutted Dewey, which was really sad because he was like that good, like good-hearted character throughout this franchise so far. Uh, and I thought, you know, he didn't really deserve that, but they did it. And I was like, well, as long as it acts as motivation, it did. They put the, they put the, I forget the name of the trope, but they put the idea that like, oh, you know, the, this character's always been around idea into play by introducing the daughter of Billy Loomis, the serial killer from the first movie, uh, Sam Carpenter. And she's a very good uh, protagonist to have, very different from Sydney, very, very aggressive, very determined. And she was actually really fun to watch. My only complaint is the motive. So for Scream 1, the motive is revenge on Sydney, while Dewey's, well not Dewey, while uh, Stu's motive is just peer pressure. Matthew Lillard was great in that. Uh, Scream 2 was revenge. Scream 3, well like the first three were different weird forms of revenge. Scream 4 was like meta commentary and wanting to be the final girl. Scream 5's motive is just that in the in-universe stab movies, the in-universe adaptations of the attacks got pretty bad, so they really just wanted to make some new murders so that they could become pretty good. That, that was weird. And then their commentary on fandom, I was like, well, that's pretty interesting. But I mean, it wasn't the most exciting motive. Uh, Scream the next one was just back to good old revenge and I thought that it actually benefited from that. I also thought that a lot of the visual pieces for Scream 6 were fun to watch. I thought the characters did great. They introduced a bunch of legacy people like uh, people related to other folks. And I thought, you know, I think that there might actually be a step in the right direction. Unfortunately, as time has gone on, and a bunch of issues have occurred, the next Scream movie is going to star Neve Campbell again as Sidney Prescott, which isn't necessarily bad, but they uh, canned the lead actress for the new Scream movies, which is unfortunate because you'll never get to see how her arc ends. They'll probably just write her off uh, in script as like, you know, hiding away or something. And with Dewey dead, the uh, general handful of legacy, like, not legacy, well, yes, yes and no, the general handful of people alive are just like Gale and Sydney and a bunch of people from probably like Scream 4, so it's not going to be as vesting. Me personally, I think if they really want to retool this but also make it work, which makes Stu alive again. Bring Matthew Lillard back. He just did a horror movie. He did PG-13 Five Nights at Freddy's, which was pretty good. I know this is a very tonal clash for some Pokemon gameplay, but I watched all those Scream movies while I was sick, so you're gonna have to sit here and listen to them, or listen to my general thoughts on them, because my co-host is not here. So, this is the best I got for you. I got, I'm, I'm out of things to say though. So, just enjoy generic loop music and the rest of